Okay, for my next step, I'm going to wire up my LED frame. So I figured I'll show you some of the uh, supplies that I've got that I'm going to work with so that I can describe how I'm going to do it. Of course, this is just if you're planning on wiring up your own frame and you're not buying one of those uh, environmental light uh, ribbons that are pre-done. Um, <clears throat> which, I mean, obviously if you've been following these videos, I've been making my own frame and bought my own individual LEDs. So if you're not planning on doing this, if you're planning on paying for the ribbons, then you won't need to know anything in this video. But, um, I would suggest, if you're going to be doing this project and diving into something quite so, um, so DIY that's this complex, you might as well learn how to do the wiring yourself. It's going to take a while, but I think you'll be probably happy with the result once you know you've done it, so long as you have done it properly and, and you follow the uh, the directions and the theory and that kind of thing. So, anyway, to get started. First thing I did was I went to my local electronic supply store. I was looking for some solid wire, some solid copper wire, because I figured um, when going around the edges and keeping it um, along this edge of my frame, it would be easier because solid wire will stay where you, where you bend it, as opposed to braided wire which is a lot more flimsy and like you can bend it and it will stay but it's it's a lot more it's a lot more difficult to work with when you want something where the wire stays where you put it this this project here is a little big for me to use the helping hands um, especially because this will be staying on the surface of the table and the helping hands don't really reach down at least not the ones that I do so what I did was I got lazy and decided not to go with solid wire because they didn't have any there and I didn't want to wait <laughs> and I figured I'll just use some tape so I bought five feet of just a regular like a multi I don't know what you call it a multi wire I guess this came with um, let's see six seven eight nine wires inside plus a ground it was originally all wrapped in a big gray it just looked like one big gray cable but these are all I believe 20 gauge wire on the inside braided I don't know if they're copper or nickel I'm not too worried about it it should work either way and what I did was because I only bought five feet I could have paid for more I suppose but uh, I grabbed the orange and the yellow or orange and the red wire to act as my positive, my black and brown to act as ground. I'll splice them together to go all the way around because my whole frame circumference will probably be, I don't know, close to 10 feet, I suppose. So two, two strands of five foot together, that should work. Uh, I've got my soldering iron. Any one will do. Um, this one isn't particularly fancy, but it's got a, a switch to choose whether or not I want to run it 20 watts or 40 watts, which can be helpful. Uh, what else have I got going here? I got a switch, which I don't think I'm going to bother wiring in at this time. Maybe later once I figure out a little more about it. It's a double throw switch with an LED built into it. I figured I'd use it for a power switch to turn on my turn on my frame, but I'd have to wire it in between the uh, adapter and the plug that I'm going to cut off and wire directly into my frame. I don't need to worry about that because I can just plug it in. In any case, I'll splice the wires together. I will run them all along here. I'll probably tape them uh, in certain spots to, you know, give me a hand sort of thing. Uh, I'll tape the red on the top and the black on the bottom just so I can avoid uh, complications. And I'm going to wire it in series parallel. I'll put up a little graphic of my schematic. Because I'm using an 18 volt power supply, I need to make sure that my voltage drop across each series of LEDs in my series parallel circuit equals 18 volts. So I'm going to wire up 12 of them at a time because they drop 1.5 volts at a time, which equals 18, uh, 12 times 1.5. And then I'll put a one ohm resistor on there, even though technically you don't need it, just in case there's power spikes. I hooked up my multimeter to my power supply just to check it out and I got a solid on moving 17.9 volts. So it should be okay but just to be safe which is a good practice I'm going to put a 1 ohm resistor on each set of 12 LEDs. In case of a power spike it should suck up any of the extra without burning out any of my LEDs in each, in each uh, circuit. 
So if I'm going 12 at a time, I've got 114 LEDs total all the way around here. 35 on each of the long sides and 22 on each of the short sides equals 114. So I believe um, that's 9 circuits of 12 LEDs and 1 last circuit of 4. So I've got a higher value resistor on the circuit with only 4 because that's only actually dropping, what is that, 6 volts of power on an 18 volt rail. So that's how I'm going to wire it up. And uh, I will do that and show you the result when I'm done. My plan is, once I get the wire on here, I will just, uh, I'll burn with my soldering iron the coating off. So I don't have to splice, like, individual chunks of wire in between circuits, if you understand my meaning. This way I can run one wire all the way around and just give myself basically access to the bare wire by burning off a small chunk that I can wire in my LEDs. So I'll do that on the top and then the bottom for the ground, so it'll be like positive here, negative underneath, so each set of series as I go around. I'll do that now. Um, I'll see if I can set up a time-lapse video, or at least show how I'm doing one of the LEDs, and then I'll show you the finished result, and we'll plug it in, try it out, and uh, hopefully I didn't waste 40 bucks and blow up all my LEDs. Cheers. Alright, so I wanted to test my circuit first, or uh, at least test the LEDs and what they draw so I can make sure I don't blow them all up when I plug in my frame for the first time. I haven't wired it up yet because I wanted to make sure of this first. So I'm using a little breadboard here powered by my Arduino, and uh, I'm running two LEDs off a 3.5 volt rail, and using an LED calculator I found that I needed 5 ohms of resistance, so I've wired up 5 1 ohm resistors in series along with these two LEDs. Um, I don't know if that's how it's supposed to work, but uh, it seems to be working now. I believe the Arduino only supplies 50 to 60 milliamps of current, so these things probably aren't as bright as they could be, but what's interesting is you can see them on this as glowing kind of a faint purplish, but with my naked eye, they're not glowing at all. I can see a little bit of red in the coil sticking out the very top, and I just grabbed the camera to check because I know cameras can see near infrared a lot better than our eyes can, which is kind of the whole point of using cameras to to do the tracking. So I grabbed my camcorder here that I thought had a night vision mode, which it doesn't, but it's an old DV cam. Let me grab it here. And uh, I thought I would take a look through it, and it can see... I need a better angle here. But there we go, that's about as good as I can get it. You can see they're glowing quite brightly, and I can even see a little bit of a trail sticking out the top. You can barely see it on this video, with my naked eye looking at the, uh, the viewfinder in this camcorder. I can see it really well. So, the infrared light is working wonderfully, and I'm ready to wire this up. So... Let's get started. Alright, so I've finally finished wiring up my frame, and I thought I'd uh, <clears throat> make a quick video of it to show everybody. I've This is the end where I'm going to hook up my plug, the female end of the plug, for my adapter, which will just be uh, a plug for here. I thought about just cutting the end off and hardwiring it in, which is entirely possible. You can do that without a problem. Um, but then I figured that'll be difficult to carry the frame around if I need to. I might as well just put a plug in so I can plug the adapter in when I need it. So that's the plan. Um, I taped each wire all the way around the frame on the top and the bottom. And um, basically just cut spots in it where I could wire up my LEDs. The picture's a little fuzzy here, but you can kind of see this is the end. The last LED in a series of 12 in my parallel circuit. I've got the resistor soldered to the end of that, and then soldered to a little gap in the insulation on the wire underneath to tie back into the ground, and then the next one starts on the 18 volt rail up here to start the next series through. Um, I, I didn't want to 
do a video on soldering because I'm sure there are plenty of really good tutorials on YouTube and it's something even though I've been doing it for a little while I still suck at it especially because my soldering irons suck and getting a decent soldering iron is something that helps greatly so keep that in mind um, this is definitely the hardest part so far getting all this done although I still recommend doing it yourself um, because I think it'll give you good experience or uh, if you want to save money because the ribbon strips are so expensive so that's it that's all of it here's the end the final resistor tied into ground and uh, that's for my last my last series only has six LEDs so I did a different value resistor and yeah so all I need to do is hook up a plug to here which I'll have to wait for the morning to do and I should be ready to plug it in and try it out so that's that my frame is done all I need to do is plug it in point the camera at it and see if it works with the software and the computer uh, the next big thing I'll have to do is build a compliant surface so when we get to that point uh, we'll see if I feel the need to make a video for that because there's especially with the Tinkerman method there's a huge post on the forum and uh, a good video by Tinkerman himself on how to do it so we'll see and uh, I'll see you in the next video